The Mercedes A250 Edition AMG is a beautiful 1.9 liter four cylinder hatchback which churns out 225 bhp and goes from 0 to 100 in just over 6 seconds. The car drives quite smooth and corners Dubai's interchanges like a dream, but that's not what we're here to discuss. Welcome to GM Tech's Reborn Automotive segment where we'll discuss all the tech inside what could be your next car. The Mercedes A250 comes with the company's MBUX or Mercedes-Benz User Experience Infotainment System. As per my knowledge, the car is also the first to have this completely redesigned UI. It's a system designed purely with a modern touch interface in mind. The main display is a beautiful touchscreen. There's a touchpad where gearboxes usually are and even the steering has touch points similar to those on BlackBerry Bold devices from forever ago. The car is decked out with tech that not only allows comfortable use through physical touch but also a whole load of voice functionality. So let's break it down. The cockpit of the Mercedes A250 and its horizontal alignment can be very overwhelming at the first instance. There is so much to interact with. While the main interactive display is 10 inches, the dash is constructed in such a way that it looks like one long horizontal display right from the digital instrument cluster to the display itself. Understanding how the display works is pretty easy. It's extremely intuitive and it's pretty simple to understand. The interface is divided like any menu system today with a home screen, base screen and so on. You've got various categories such as audio, seat adjustment, car settings and many more. All these categories are accessible through swiping across the screen which is seamless. The user interface is very well made. An example of this is the audio category where browsing your favorite radio stations through a vinyl cover style gallery or interacting with maps through pinch and zoom is extremely easy. Speaking of maps. I get that Mercedes had a great idea in mind when they created their mapping systems which are on the basis of here maps, but there is an augmented reality mode for the map that drove me mad. It shows you the drive like any GPS app, but for some reason Mercedes decided to add an augmented reality as a background. The car uses the front cam to establish what's around and then displays it on the screen. I know it might seem like I'm nitpicking, but for a feature people you will be using a lot, I found this to be a major distraction. I'm not sure if the virtual sky can be switched off, but I definitely hope Mercedes adds the option at some point. The customizations on the car are endless. One particular feature I love is the driver profile setting. Up to seven drivers each can save all personalized settings like seat adjustment, screen brightness, vehicle ambiance, car favorites, etc. So whoever drives your car doesn't have to mess with any of your settings. Right ahead of the armrest, replacing what would be the space for a gearbox in most cars, you'll find the touchpad for the vehicle. The touchpad is super sensitive and takes some getting used to. It also has three physical buttons above it. Now, since I had the car for a very short period of time, I can't say I got comfortable with the system because initially I would keep touching it expecting a gear and later I found myself interacting with the main display or on the controls on the steering wheel. The touchpad also comes with handwriting recognition to search for contacts and such, but honestly, I never needed to use this. The touchpad mainly came useful for quick gestures to change the song or the radio station. Its haptic feedback helps you with not having to look down while using it too. The hard buttons of the steering wheel are extremely well thought out and in daily use turn to be my primary mode of interaction with the vehicle. On the right side of the steering wheel are the controls for media and calls and voice activation. On the left side are the controls for cruise control, speed limiting and speed settings for both. Now the unique factor aren't the controls itself but the two touch pads on the steering wheel. The touch pads, which by the way heavily remind me of the track pads on Blackberries back in the day, have individual controls. The one on the right controls the main 10.5 inch display and the one on the left controls the digital instrument cluster in front of you while driving. Both are extremely easy to use and definitely help keeping your hands on the steering at all times. The entire interior of the car has a metallic finish and even though once you touch a lot of it, you realize there's a lot of plastic. That being said, whether it's the airplane like toggles for your AC or the seat adjustment buttons or the dials for the volume, everything has very satisfying clicks and doesn't feel flimsy in any possible way. 8 out of 10 times, the voice assistant would understand my commands even if I stuttered or stopped to think of the correct wording for a second. 
Now, Mercedes does claim that the car learns user behavior and speech patterns as time goes by, but I can't comment on the same since I had the car only for four days. While using voice functionality, I was easily able to adjust temperature, change tracks or radio stations and get directions. Now, while there are many more functions like cracking jokes and asking the voice assistant what it thinks of BMW, those are mere gimmicks and I don't find anyone using them unless showing off to other passengers in the car. Daily use is easy and the system works to make your drive safer and more efficient. I love that the entire system works online too. It is also said that the system is set to receive update about every six months. Last but not least, the Mercedes Me app is a one-stop shop for everything you want to know about your car while you're away from it. You can interact with the car, but while I was testing the car, this wasn't the smoothest experience. The app allows you to see the status of the car, check its location, start and stop the car and perform various other functions. The app worked a few times, but when it didn't, it was a real nuisance. For example, when the above shot was taken, I was testing out the feature and switched the car on. Once the car was on, I wanted to switch the car off. Unfortunately, the app wouldn't respond and I needed to go all the way down to switch it off. In most cases with all vehicles, with remote engine start, the car does go off automatically after a while if you don't manually get into the car, but still, this shouldn't have happened. Something similar also once happened with the windows. Apart from this, the app works pretty well, location tracking is great, and the immense information on your smartphone can be handy in many scenarios. All in all, a decent perk to spend some money on. The overall experience of the MBUX system in the Mercedes A250 was an absolute delight. When it comes to the task of adding technology to a car and it actually being useful for the consumer, I give Mercedes top marks. The Hey Mercedes voice capabilities, MBUX's beautifully thought out user experience and the steering wheel controls stole the show for me in this review. The Mercedes A250 starts at just over 150,000 dirhams and the MBUX system is standard in all of them. At this price, the MBUX system and the zippy comfort of the Mercedes A250 hatchback come together at a pretty decent package. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know what you think of our new car technology segment in the comments below. Until next time, peace.